A lot of practice, even formal practice, can be done eyes open, and it's important to do it eyes open because so much of our anchoring of our sense of self is is based on visual cues. I mean, like we just we we know that you can if you give people the right visual cues, you can translocate their sense of self. You can give them an out of body experience, you know, with a with a video display where you you can literally make them feel like you go. There's a body swapping illusion. You can make them you, you can make them feel that they're in another person's body looking back at their body if you if you you know run the cameras the right way. I've done this uh, in VR seeing an image of of you they create an avatar for you and then your right. bodily movements generate the movements of the avatar and um, you start gaining presence as they call it in the yeah, VR yeah. lingo very quickly and then pretty soon um, you lose sense of your own bodily representation and yeah. and um, it's a little eerie. Uh, what's eerious to me is um, going back into, of course never left, but right. um, back into your actual body when the VR goggles pop off. Right. The world seems almost overwhelming, the number of sensory stimuli mm. that are in a, a, like a laboratory room, which is actually quite sparse. Right. Um, so exactly what you described, this translocation of, of notions of self through yeah. visual experience. And but, but conversely, when you lose the sense of self, the, the sense of self I'm talking about, it can be especially vivid and, and salient with eyes open because it, so, much, so many of your reference points to selfhood are delivered visually, right? And especially in, in a social situation. It's like, you know, I'm talking to you, you're looking back at me, right? So you're, the implication of your gaze is that I'm over here behind my face implicated by your gaze. Like, so the sense that you're looking at something is the sense of self in that social context, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and if, you're, if your facial expression changes, like, so I'm saying something, and if you kind of furrow your brow, like, well, what the hell's here? You know, and I can read into that facial change some inner state of yours that is, you know, salient to me. All of a sudden, we've got this sort of dance of like, I'm noticing you reacting to me, and I'm fe that's, that's changing the way I'm feeling about what I'm, that that that's that's the you know the the purview of you know every neurosis everyone didn't want right and every relationship I had a girlfriend when I was a postdoc who's a who was um very very uh, she was brilliant really um still is and she always said that every relationship they refer is is there are four arrows she used to say she's a mm. neuroscientist still is and said you know there's the arrow of you know uh, she was talking to me so she said you know me to you and kind of what you perceive coming from me, and then there's you to me, and then there's an arrow from the middle going right back at each one of us, right. which is right. our own perception of what the other person is thinking about yeah. us, and it's feeding back on the other arrow. And she gave me this very um, clear but um, model of basically relationships. Um, right. uh, the relationship failed, but it was good while it lasted, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> and um, But the four arrow model of relationships actually shows up in every type of one-on-one uh, one -on -one relationship, and it's probably an under-description of, of the total number of arrows, but I think it's exactly what you're describing, is that perception of self through the eyes of other, whether or not we're empathic or not, strongly shapes the way that we access different context-dependent rule sets about what we're gonna say right. and not gonna say. It's right. very dynamic, right? Yeah, so, but the, the freedom that I think we want, and, and people can sometimes experience this just haphazardly, but the, the, the thing that, the, the center of the bullseye from the meditative point of view, is to get off that ride entirely and to, so, so that losing the sense of self in this context of, of a, a social encounter is to, is to give up your face, essentially. Like your, like, so, and, and what, what that entails is, or what that gives you is the free attention to actually just pay attention to the other person, right? And the other person is now no longer quite an object in the world for you. There's really just a kind of a totality of which that person is a part. Um, and, and, and actually, you know, Martin Buber, the, the uh, kind of mystical uh, Jewish philosopher, uh, talked about the kind of the I-thou relationship. And, and this, I think is, you know, it's been a long time since I've read Buber, but, um, and I don't know if he goes, you know, far enough to be truly non-dualistic, but this distinction between I, uh, I and thou um, the kind of the, the thou part of it is, is uh, I think, uh, potentially this. Or I mean, again, it's been several decades since I read read him, but there's a there's a there's a way of beholding another person where you have the free attention to simply behold them, right? Like you're no longer you're you're no you no longer care what they think about you. You don't feel 
neurotically implicated by their gaze. You don't feel, you, you're, you're simply the space in which they're appearing, right? And so you're free, you know, like, like there's just, there's no, and, and people can feel, and so, so you're, 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 by definition, you're no longer self-conscious, right? And, when we think, and this phrase, self-consciousness, really does get at this, what I'm calling the self, the, 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 the illusory self, as a kind of contraction. And, and you, can, you can notice this for yourself. Just imagine what it's like to go from not being self-conscious to suddenly being self-conscious. And the, 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 the proximate cause of this, you know, almost invariably is suddenly recognizing that somebody's looking at you. It's like you're in a Starbucks and you're, you know, you're alone and you're reading the newspaper or whatever it is. And this is it's now sounds highly anachronistic. It's been three years since I've held a physical newspaper, I think, in a Starbucks. Um, but you know, you're 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 just minding your own business and you look up and you're just you're seeing, you know, a room full of strangers. But then you notice that someone is just looking at you, you know. And so, like that moment of eye contact, right? Suddenly, that throws you back on yourself. As a kind of suddenly, you're the object in in the world for that other person. That recognition is a the tightening there, the kind of contraction there is a is a a a further ramification of this this feeling most of us have most of the time of being the center of experience. Like the the, the, the place you feel like, like it's it's like. You know, we're all walking around with a fist, and in moments of self-consciousness, the fist gets really tight. You know, and that's and that's um, that's the thing that gets fully relaxed when you discover this this you know, what I'm you know at various points call the nature of mind or the, the the non-dual nature of consciousness. It's just that there is no center to this experience, and when you recognize no center, then even when your gaze is aimed at another person's gaze, there is no implication going back to the center because there is no center, right? And, and rather than that being an experience of weird detachment or confusion or, or it's, it's actually an experience of greater relationship because you're no longer, you no longer defend it. You're not, you're not defending anything over here. Like you're not, you're not braced against anything. You're just the space in which that person is showing up. And so it's a, it's a, it's a, an experience of being much more comfortable in in the presence of another person, you know, whatever your relationship, because you're not contracting, right? And then when you do, when you have that, again, and this is meditation, right? This is meditation that is totally compatible with having a conversation with somebody. And then when you notice yourself contracting, like when you notice you're not doing, you're not meditating anymore, you're just, you're actually reacting. Like they just said something or looked a certain way, and now you're cast back upon yourself in relationship to them, that becomes a kind of mindfulness alarm, right? Then you know that, that, that it, it becomes like the, the, the unsatisfactoriness of that psychologically becomes more and more salient, right? And it's um, because that's not, it, one, that's not the way you want to be. I mean, it's like it's the antithesis of it being as, as comfortable as you were a moment ago. But two, it's, it's, something you're doing unnecessarily, right? Like, it's like you're, 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 you're like, again, you're making a fist when you don't have to make a fist, right? And, it, and it's, um, again, you can leave aside all those circumstances where it's appropriate to react to someone and, you know, I'm, I'm, sure. you know, I'm into martial arts and self-defense and yes, you're not supposed to be just this puddle of goo out in the world who can be just mistreated by people and, and you know, never put up, uh, you know, resistance. But it's um, psychologically, you know, even if, even if a state like anger or contraction is sometimes normative and appropriate, the question is, how long is it normative and appropriate for? Like, how, how long do you want to stay angry for? Um, in my experience, these, these kind of classically negative emotions like anger and fear are appropriate as salience cues. You know, they, they orient you to, you know, an emergency or a potential emergency. Uh, but then in dealing with the emergency, they're almost never the state you want to be in. You know, it's like you, you don't, you know, you, 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 like it's, it's better to actually be calm in an emergency, you know, so.